because I know you were feeling creatively charged during that time. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And, that, and then this is, of course, after the release of Kushi, the smash yeah. release, number one in... <laughs> Kushi. Why did you Kushi. Why did you say it like that? Girl, it's 4 <laughs> fucking I am where I am. What do you mean why I say that like that? I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Hosted by Quinn Murphy and Becca Hobart. Hello. We are Quinn and we are Becca. We are Becca. And welcome Um. to Manic Pixie Jumpscare, (laughs) a podcast where Becca and I talk openly about our shared delusions, passions. And, and love, love for each, each other. other. Oh my god! Wow, that was really that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's very moving. I like how we both went speechless for a sec because it was so <laughs> wow. moving. Oh yeah. my goodness gracious! Um, oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, I I did a little mix of Russian and French there, which is so fascinating. I um, did um something. Is that your Heidi Klum? That it was very high D Klum. Oh my god, Tim. Mm-hmm. I still need to finish making the cut season three. Um uh, boy. Long time coming. I know. I haven't I haven't um I haven't had any time to watch television. <laughs> <laughs> so busy being one of those bitches. One of the, one of those I just ghosts. like don't have time. I don't know. I just like don't have time. It is <laughs> it is hard over here because um sometimes when I have done it, well, first of all, some of the streaming services I use. So, like, the main thing I want to watch, the main thing I, like, really want to catch up on is Survivor. Mm-hmm. And that's on Paramount Plus. And, like, Paramount Plus isn't a thing. Well, the one time I tried to watch it was when oh. I was still in Czechia. And Paramount Plus isn't a thing there. And so... You need a VPN. Yeah, but then the VPN kind of slows everything down because oh. <laughs> my computer understandably is connecting to like wi-fi and in new york city or whatever <laughs> it's crazy that you have the first computer ever made actually my computer is <laughs> old as dust <laughs> my computer is, is older than most things vintage at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> most living things <laughs> yeah, so shout out to her yeah shout out to her <laughs> she you know i only have to fight with her like once a week so yeah every day every day Uh, every day of my life oh Mm -hmm. my goodness well here we are Mm -hmm. here i am here you are (laughs) yes another week um so becca Uh, what the hell have you even been up to even yeah so even get this um well so okay so (sighs) you did text me about this i was gonna reveal Uh it as a big surprise shock but I am glad which, you found it. Which yeah. kind of wild of you to expect I wouldn't find this considering the topic <laughs> of our episode today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Tee-hee. Um, but Beck's gloss has dropped a single yep. called Killer Queen. So did you listen to it? I did. I didn't listen to it like I need to listen to it with headphones in so I can take in like the literature of okay, the see. lyrics. Yeah. Um and I was deep in preparation for this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can I tell you, I genuinely, at the beginning, the guitar, uh-huh. I loved it. I was like, oh, my God, <gasps> this is amazing. Perfect. Yay. This is amazing. And I, and I, <laughs> I just thought of a way to phrase it that would have sounded so fucking shady. But I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll just say it. I was like, oh, I understand what Becca meant when she was talking about, like, just shitty making, music. Yeah, shitty music. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I'm obsessed with it for that reason as well. Like, it's okay, well, it's just you. brave to make something. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it truly does not sound like anything else I've heard recently. Perfect. Yeah. Good. So you're pushing the needle forward, which well, we always you. love. But yeah. something about Becca is she's a lyrics girl. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> I'm right Other. up there with her. No, yeah. Taylor, no, you're above her because Taylor B. 
tap, tap, tap on her <laughs> keyboard being like genius.com slash backsclaws <laughs> trying to figure out and take corners. Uh, She's trying to be you so, so bad. <laughs> uh <laughs> She's writing vigilante there. shit and she's like, what does Bex Claus have to say about this actually? If the word coochie is in any of midnight, shut it down. It's over. Shut it's it down. over for her. Cease and desist that woman. <laughs> Literally. The way she would definitely send me flowers and be like, so sorry, girl. <laughs> you were confused. Um, you are to yeah. her as, Olivia, as she is to Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, wow. <laughs> crazy just two girls from pennsylvania i guess Um, (laughs) but yeah and then the rest of it so there will be another song next week and then another one after that and then another one after that and then the ep comes out (laughs) yes (laughs) i'm like trembling wait i'm trembling all of a sudden yeah they're all really short like the one i just um came out with but I love that because I'm not going to make anything worse because it needs to be full song length, like three minutes, right? They say it was the perfect one. Uh-huh. I'm like over here, Pete Davidsoning. <laughs> I'll be happy. happy. I thought you went in my life. <laughs> I, um, yeah. I actually, uh, there's a new Brie Runway song that I found out about last night. It's only like two minutes. So oh, perfect. Yeah. It's a song. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, and songs are short now. <laughs> well, yeah, they were. I feel oh, like songs are so. starting to get longer. Or maybe just we the having... songs that I listen to. Yeah, we were having like um, a four minute moment. Like four back know, kind of song. No, four minutes. Oh. It was like the normal song length for a minute there. But it's kind of, I don't know, going back to. Yeah, but then three, everybody maybe. was like, oh, TikTok, um, mm-hmm. uh, which I hate when people like something that really bugs me is when people are like, oh, TikTok is changing the music industry. It's just one of those things like we talked about this in the pet peeves episode. Like um, mm-hmm. one of those things like everybody knows it doesn't have to be said. Yeah. Like we literally or it needs to be said oh once God. and then everybody's just like, oh, yeah. And it doesn't mm-hmm. need to be like you don't need to bring it up. I feel like every conversation was like, oh, TikTok has just changed everything about how we listen to music. And I'm like, yeah, be fucking for real. <laughs> <laughs> Say something fun. <laughs> don't say that again add something <laughs> new to the conversation maybe have you ever tried something yeah. like that literally <laughs> and literally. so yeah oh my god but a whole ep wait okay let me yeah. put on let me put on my like i was about to say diane warren but she's a songwriter um diane sawyer <laughs> is fine <with> that. okay <laughs> um so like what can we expect from the ep so it so Becca, so something about Becca that yeah. we might talk about a little bit later. Yeah. Or maybe not, because I did change the list around a little bit. Is Whoa. Becca was known earlier this year to be in what was called a villain era. Yeah. And so is the EP still kind of like, because I know you were feeling creatively charged during that time. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, that, and then this is, of course, after the release of Kushi. The smash yeah. release number one in Kushi. Why did you Kushi. Why did you say him like that? Well, it's four what? fucking AM where I am. What uh, do you mean? Why did I say that like that? I forgot. I forgot. I rolled out of bed 30 minutes ago. And so Kushi. Yes, I got to get on and record this silly little show with my friend Becca. Literally. And for what? <laughs> um, but like yeah, the music so, and engagement. <laughs> yeah, and you did that for. Oh my god, the way you just put that coffee cup to your your mouth was so <laughs> cunty. It made Goldie jump off the bed. She said, Are "Oh, you oh wait, wait, we have a guest in studio today. We got to mention." Yeah, but he really did jump off the bed, and now I can't get him back up because he needs help. Yeah, that, that oh, seems Goldie. big for that little dog. <laughs> I know, and the door is. Uh, he's gonna find out. Yeah, he just found out the door is closed. Aw, <laughs> goop. He fucked around, he found out. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Goldie. Um Okay. Yeah. But after the smash re- sm- <laughs> after the smash release of Coochie. Yeah. We literally went number one in Finland. Um Lit- no. Literally, why do I have 80 Finnish listeners? Or you have one Finnish listener who listens 
to no. Coochie just like over and over again. You ha- no, that's streams. Oh, is it unique streams? Yeah, it's that's it's so unique listeners, and <gasps> it's not like you know if uh, if it was on YouTube, like you don't have to be logged in for a view, but for Spotify, you have to be logged in to like listen to something. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it's like eighty different accounts. Oh my god, you're like Helsinki. playing. Yeah, you're playing at the clubs. It's crazy. I'm so excited. That's wild. Okay, so yeah. is the EP like the villain era? It's I would I mean it's Halloween themed. <gasps> yes, of course. So you could say so. Um and it's like yeah, it's kind of a joke. Mm. Like must like Coochie was. Yeah. Um it's just a little bit goofy, funny, and ridiculous, and I love it. Although Coochie is it's a joke, but it's also so serious at the same time. Well, yeah. Like everyone I've played the song for has been like, this is so good, actually. <laughs> and I think that's what everyone's going to think about the Graveyard Heart EP. <gasps> yeah. Not the name reveal. <laughs> yep. Not the gender reveal of the album. <laughs> she. <laughs> she. 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 Her. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, the Halloween, it's very turn off the light. Exactly. Yeah. It's very, it's very, you're, you're very turn off the light right now. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. And oh, I'm, God, that's so exciting. So excited for all the, the visuals and stuff that I have planned and stuff. Yeah. The album, the album cover is cunty. Thank you. Wait. So are you working with the same collaborators as Coochie or? No, this is all me. <gasps> yeah, because I was like, oh my God, that's impressive that it's all you. Thank you. You said I'm the writer, I'm the performer, I'm the <laughs> producer. I'm doing all of it. All right. Well, I mean, with that being said, what what are you up to reading just in all these countries that you're in or like what's I going on with you? I have been reading a lot. I've read, I'm on my fourth book since. Like my oh. whole excursion. So nice. yeah, I read like three books in the month since I've been gone from home. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, more on that later. Um, but since last we spoke, I traveled mm-hmm. to Berlin. Um, right. Like literally got on a train a couple hours after our last recording and then a bus after that. And then <laughs> um Quinn in Berlin. Um, it has, <laughs> that is my response to mm-hmm. Becca in Barcelona. Yep. And more importantly, <laughs> um, what's the Emily girl's name? Paris. Emily in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> Who is she? Yeah. Right. Her. What's the girl's name? Um, anyway. <laughs> and oh my God. I'm obsessed with Berlin. Wow. It's, it is. I can't even, but like, what is it? I don't know. Describe it in like a color or a feeling. <gasps> oh, it's definitely black. Black is the definite color, but like, um, Whoa, cool. Black, but like, <sighs> black, but like, you know, when like the pavement, like, you know, when like pavement has like a, I would actually describe it as like a black block of pavement where, okay. you know, like when pavement has like a little like luster to it and like you can yeah. see it like in the light, you can see it like glow. Oh, yeah. And like okay. twinkle a little bit. Uh huh. Berlin is like a block of that pavement. But if one of the like corners of it is like fucked up and you can see like the gray, like rock underneath. Oh, cool. Okay. So, like, very Just born. What? Yes. Like, very, um, like there's an, ex- there's an excessiveness and a beauty to it. But there is also that, like, you know, a little bit of like a, grittier edge to it if that makes sense Mm -hmm. okay um and that's something i like about european city not all european cities but like something that i really have enjoyed about athens istanbul and um berlin is that they feel like they don't feel too different from like our cities we have like in the west and stuff it's just that like Mm -hmm. everything is like cleaner but like somehow um like Dirtier. less sanitized if that makes sense mm-hmm. <laughs> like it feels like there's still like culture or not there, yeah like a, or not not culture like broadly but like a unique culture if that makes sense yeah 
they're just like ugh, older yes yeah yeah they're just more <laughs> history oh my yeah. god but um yeah i was obsessed with berlin from the first day i was here really um mm-hmm. I took uh I took a tour and so I'd be on walking tours which is crazy because after all the time I served as a tour guide now the shoe is on the other foot oh you are the tourie yeah interesting but these tours are different because first of all all the walking tours I've been on are three hours that's kind of got kind of crazy I know oh my god <laughs> no but, but they don't they don't feel like three hours if that makes sense but anyway mm, okay um so i think they're like a great way to see the city great way to support like you know the local economy and stuff although Mm -hmm. weirdly in berlin everywhere else i've been the guides have been like from the actual place but in berlin Mm -hmm. for whatever reason all my guides were not german (laughs) oh okay one one was i took three here and one was australian one was american and then one was scottish when was Australian? Yes. And she was oh honestly, God. her name was Ernestina. Girl, if you're listening, if you guys want to follow oh. her on Instagram, Tina's Tours wow. Berlin on Instagram. Oh my God. Ernestina. She, yes. She is an amazing tour guide. So this is actually probably like one of my favorite parts of the trip, this tour we took, because it was just kind of like the general like Berlin tour. And uh-huh. it's interesting because a lot of like the like not main section but like kind of like the touristy section of the city is very like neoclassical and Mm -hmm. so it's all these like buildings that are like trying to look roman but were built like you know after rome Mm -hmm. um in like the 1800s 1900s um and that was kind of a result of like depressions and stuff and then Mm -hmm. we walk like deeper into the city and eventually get to um we enter the tour at brandenburg gate and usually i like to do them early in the morning like they'll usually start at like 10 a.m and so like that gets me up gets me out of my accommodations gets me like walking around and stuff um but i couldn't book like that like an early tour for this one because Mm -hmm. like i booked it the day before and so i booked it at three it had been raining like all day and it was like cold and i was like I don't even know, like, if I can go on this tour. Like, I don't want to be standing in the rain for three hours. Yeah. And so then I decided to just, like, still go and, like, check it out and, like, see what would happen on the walk over. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did end up going on the tour. And by the end of the tour, so it starts at three. It's a three-hour tour. So the sun mm-hmm. is beginning to set by the time we get to the last stop, which is Brandenburg Gate. Mm-hmm. Um, and Brandenburg Gate like backs up to the west and so the sun sets like behind brandenburg gate um and so it was beautiful because um you could just see the sun setting behind the gate and it was like coming through the gate and you could stand at different angles see the sun in different ways coming through the gate i have so many pictures of it it's my new my new phone background is one of the pictures i took um yeah um but um yeah it was beautiful and then because it like the sun had come out and it was raining on the other side of brandenburg gate there's a huge fucking rainbow (gasps) yeah and so you can like you can like on the one side you would turn one way and you would see Mm -hmm. um like brandenburg gate with the sun setting behind it and then if you turned around you saw a huge rainbow Wow, that's so perfect. Yeah, it was beautiful. And it was like my Ernestina first night. took you through that. Yes, and Miss Ernestina took me through it. Um, wow, I'm yeah. so obsessed with that. No, I loved, I loved her. Her tour yeah. was great. Tina's tour is Berlin. If you guys are ever looking for a tour guide in Berlin, um, while she is Ernestina, I am Lyarina. <laughs> Do you like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good one. Thanks. I'm larfing. I'm larfing. I'm larfing. Um, <laughs> I'm larfing. Yeah, I'm, I'm rolling on the floor laughing. Yeah. R O F L. Um. It fell. Yeah, and then it's just, uh, yeah, it's just cool. I took an, I took another tour that was like kind of like more of the alternative sections, and so like going through like the street art of the city, and also mm-hmm. Berlin has a history of like squats 
Um, and like, okay. it, so like squatting like works differently here. Like mm-hmm. the, the laws are different. Yeah. And so basically they're just these like, um, especially like right after the fall of the Berlin wall, but mm-hmm. like even up till now, like we passed one on our tour, like they're just squats and stuff like people like living communally communally in like a found (laughs) space kind of um but they have but it's europe so they actually have like rights um (laughs) squatters rights yeah and so um yeah but like squat like squats are still a thing here it's so cool i went to this um that tour the alternative tour ended this market that was like a squat market and so it's like semi indoor, semi outdoor, but like all this like found stuff like set up. It was called YAM, which stands for Young African Art Market. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, all these like all these little businesses and stuff. I had a lunch of jerk chicken with rice and vegetables. Oh, so good. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah. And the, it, uh, it's so cool. And like, it's nice because like, something I enjoy about Europe is that like not everything is like so corporatized Mm -hmm. um and like consumerist as is in the U.S. it's like not like every it's not like four companies own everything here in the same way yeah like it feels like in the U.S. um Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much the U.S. felt like that until like I came here because like you just like walk down the street and there'll just be like cute little like independent boutiques where like people have their brand and stuff mm-hmm. and you yeah. know run it in-house and stuff and like just because of like how the U.S. is set up economically like that stuff is disappearing way harder um, yeah yes mm-hmm. yeah and so um yeah that was that was a really cool tour <gasps> and then mm-hmm. of course yeah I went clubbing <gasps> oh my god in oh wait the- are, so are you with a group again or no, you no, clubbing no. by yourself? No, it all, okay. it all kind of fell into place. So I was kind of, it can be hard when you're solo traveling because there are like ways to meet people, but sometimes you'll like try to meet people and then like you won't, you know, really vibe. And then it's kind of like, well, what do I do here? I don't mm-hmm. know. Meeting people on like while solo is a little hit and miss yeah um but berlin it was the greatest hits only so wow um one day my hostel here was very social there was like okay. a lounge where everybody kind of hung out like at nighttime mm-hmm. um and like a kitchen and so i just like hung out there one night and i ended up talking to people and so i actually like the second group of people I started talking to were actually these two girls. Okay. One was from that's right, the UK, London. Okay. Yeah. And the other was from that's right, Dublin, Ireland. Um Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> and so I started talking to them and then there were just these guys on like the other side of us. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> there are these guys on the other side of us and then I started talking to one of them and then um after I talked to one of them for a couple minutes, he was like, oh, well, a couple of us are, like, going to go out. Um, and, like, you're more than welcome to come if you would like. And I was like, mm, yeah. <laughs> Definitely going to do that. <laughs> something that's very good about me, I'll have, like, an idea of my night. And then I'll be like, oh, I can actually change that. <laughs> oh, I actually flip that on that side. Yeah, because, like, oh I was, like, God. planning on, like, maybe, like, reading, like, just having a quiet <laughs> night in the hostel. But and then he's, you like... You have to go out. Yeah, like, and then he's, yeah. like... And then he's, like, do you want to come clubbing with us? I was, like, mm-hmm, yeah. Because that's, part <laughs> of that, that's like, part of it where, like, if now that I know how it all works, if I, like, came back to Berlin, I feel like mm-hmm. here, more than, like, the U.S., you could have a good time if you went by yourself. Really? Okay. Yes. Um because of what I'll talk about but um Mm -hmm. yeah but it was still nice like kind of break the ice with another group of people so Mm -hmm. the girls don't end up coming with us and so this is kind of a crazy so it's me and all these like mid to late 30s and early 40s straight men like four where are they from (laughs) Uh, two of them are from the U.S. one guy lives in the U.S. but I think is from somewhere else and then one guy was from Paris whoa and so 
we just like go we went to a club called Tresser here in Berlin okay um and uh <laughs> the first thing I was afraid of was actually um I didn't bring like a form of identification to the club which because I've not been asked for identification at anything like that in mm-hmm. like a month <laughs> like since I've been in Europe yeah. I've not been asked for any <laughs> of that at a club yeah. like the only thing I'll be asked for my identification for is if I'm in like an airport or checking into a hotel um uh-huh. and so um but she was like the bouncer was interestingly an American woman <laughs> um at the okay. first club and she was like if you look like babies have your identification out <laughs> so I was like uh. and then what these guys like the older like guys in my group like took out their identification <laughs> She goes, now why did y'all think I meant you when I said that? <laughs> Good for her. Good for her. <laughs> oh my god, that was so funny. She called them old. Um yeah. And old me, heads. I believe, by extension. But anyway. Um That's fine. So we go in, we like check our coats, we get a drink, and then the dance floor is kind of crazy because first of all, there's definitely like some fog going on. So you can't really see like in front of your face. <laughs> Okay. Like, um, and it's of course like techno, so it's like, mm, 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 mm. um, yeah. And I was, I really enjoy. I I actually really enjoyed the techno part of it because, um, or more than I thought I would because, um, I was a little like I was a little, um, I wondered how like appealing techno music is if you're not like on hard drugs when you listen to it. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it turns out it can be it's fun. Yeah, um, and it's nice because it's just um, it's definitely a different energy than going clubbing in the U.S. Like people actually like dance here. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> like you Do can you think tell. I would like, like it. What? You think I would like it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah okay Mm -hmm. but like people actually like people come out to like if they're on the dance floor they're like dancing yeah you know like it's like it's like about that for a second yeah and if they want to do something else their areas they can go and like you know do that but like when you're on the dance floor it's about like dancing and stuff i love that i feel like is part of the reason i get kind of upset in the u.s sometimes because i'm like why is no one shaking ass right now i know yeah why is nobody here with me (laughs) um and so we kind of like started the night together my whole group and then I eventually just like I lost them somewhere in the shuffle Mm -hmm. and so I was just like on my own for a while just like dancing and I somehow made it to like the front near like the DJ's booth (laughs) Mm -hmm. like the front of the dance floor and I was just I felt very connected to all the people like people had fans and stuff they would like fan me off um word because I was dancing oh my god at at one point (laughs) at one point there are these people just like sitting on the um there's like a little like elevated surface like right before like the DJ's booth and the DJ's booth Uh is in like a cage (laughs) yeah and so there's like a surface that people are like getting up on and like dancing or sitting or something Mm -hmm. um and I was like really on that and then there was a girl and a guy on the um the the like elevated surface and the girl Mm -hmm. just sticks a cigarette in my mouth at one point (laughs) lovely (laughs) lit it was a gift no oh i lit up myself i lit up myself (laughs) (laughs) it was a gift oh how sweet (laughs) it was a gift um and then how gracious the people were learning and yes and then the guy like leaned over to me and i and I'm going to say, in my fantasy, he invited me to an after party, but... Um, okay, yeah, yeah. I couldn't I hear you. any of the details because it was a club in Berlin, and it was, like, <laughs> in my ear. Yeah. Like, as he tried to talk to me, I'm, like, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> but he also might have been asking for an after party, but, you know, uh, for me, for me, to mm-hmm. me. Yeah. To me baggage, it is um, was- actually going to be that he was inviting a me. A VIP, yeah, um, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then yeah so i was just like on and off the dance floor i did go to the bathroom <laughs> he's trying to whisper we like your vibe <laughs> we, lo- me and my partner we saw, saw you from you across from the room <laughs> six inches away and we love your vibe um <laughs> and so then i go to the bathroom um at one point and uh 
I'm washing my hands and this girl comes up to me and she goes, do you speak German? <laughs> this was not her accent at all. Um, okay. <laughs> she's like, do you speak German? And I was like, no, English. And she was like, okay, um, do you have uh, speed? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> How you say uh, ecstasy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, why not in French? Damn. No, literally. Sorry. And I was like, I have a cigarette. <laughs> and she was like it was a like, gift <laughs> she was like oh that the gift one was gone by that point um, oh okay. I had backups uh, let's just say <laughs> okay, that okay word um and so she uh she was like okay and so I gave her a cigarette wait you can smoke in the club oh oh That's cool. yeah okay. oh yeah you nice. can um nice. yeah many of my clothes stink uh <laughs> nice <laughs> made my clothes fucking uh. stink anyway Wow, that sounds so fun. Yeah, and so then I go out and um, I uh, it's like it's like almost four a.m. at this point. It's three thirty, mm-hmm. and I looked into my phone and I was like, "Oh, I want to dance till I'll, I'll like go out on the floor and like dance till four. Um, mm-hmm. I made it maybe fifteen more minutes before I was like, "You know what? Actually, I'm I'm done for the night." Yeah, <laughs> and then I just assumed all the people I came with had left. Yeah, but then I walked into like a bar area. There was like the bar before you went in to the actual dance floor and they were all like mm-hmm. still there and stuff. And so I was like, oh, oh perf. perf. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, they also um, at uh, the that club, I had to get two stickers placed on the cameras on my phone. What? No pictures like- allowed like inside the venue. That is so slay. Honestly, and so they I literally put those right off. What? <laughs> I would pick those right off. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, and then <laughs> I went clubbing the next night as well because I had told the girls who didn't come with us uh, that night, I had told them that I would go with them the next night because they were going to go to the Kit Kat Club, which is a famous Ooh. club here in Berlin that is, first of all, like has a strict door policy <laughs> some nights. Okay. And second of all, is based off of... Um, the Kit Kat Club from Cabaret, um, oh, the musical, cool. um, yeah. and Goodbye to Berlin, which is the um, novel that that musical is based off of. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, it's known for, like, being kind of, like, a kinky club. Like, people go mm-hmm. dressed in, like, you know, all their stuff, basically. Cool. And so I went, to, I went to these, like, back-to-back. And something about staying out until... The first night I did not, I was not in my bed until 5 a.m. in the morning. Like I wasn't mm-hmm. going to bed until 5 a.m. Yeah. Um, and so something about staying out that late is that there's no way to function. No, like your body just cannot. Yeah, there's no way to function it. like the next day. And so yeah. I just had kind of a calm day. I edited the podcast. <laughs> um, Lovely. And then the girls came up, they like refound me and they were like, oh, do you still want to go out? And I was like, yeah. I have to leave. When in Rome, must. baby. When in Rome. <laughs> um, but I didn't have anything to wear because my clothing is very limited, obviously, because mm-hmm. I'm traveling semi light. Um, mm-hmm. And so I had to pull a little something together. Um, but yeah, I think I think we also went on a less strict night. So like we didn't really have any problems getting in. Um, okay. But my outfit was a little slay. Um <sighs> What'd you wear? I wore, I wore my pink like kimono. Okay, I'm with you. And I wrapped like a scarf around it to like close it, and then I was basically just wearing underwear <laughs> underneath. Um, Lovely. Yeah, and then I had like uh, a pair of socks I have, and then um, my like black loafers I bought, I brought with me. Um, oh, and then um, one of the belts I have with me. It's like it's from this brand called Lockwood 51 and has like the brand name on it. And their slogan is stay queer as fuck. So it's like a reversible belt. So like on the one side, it has like Lockwood 51. And then on the other side, it says stay queer as fuck. And so I actually took that Mm -hmm. and wrapped it around my neck (laughs) and like fastened it and stuff. And so it was like I had like a little leash on. Um, Uh And so, yeah. Um, So I felt kind of slayful that night. And that night was fun. Um, well, first of all, for Kit Kat, we had to like turn in our phones when we oh, checked wow. our clothes. Yeah, they were like, you have to leave your phone like with your clothes. 
Um, That's crazy. And so, yeah, we didn't have phones or anything. Um, and so, yeah, it was really cool. In the, well, first of all, we walk into a room and the first room is decorated like a hospital. <laughs> Oh my God. And so there are there little like hospital beds and there was a dentist chair and there were also like x-ray images like. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, it was it was really cool. But it was like in a, it was like a hospital in like a bomb shelter. <laughs> um, oh my God. And yeah. Um, and the girl. And so you with, walk through that and then you go to the. Yeah. And then you kind of weave through and they would like open as the night went on. They would open different rooms. Like they opened this one like lounge room kind of like later in the night where you could go and like hang out or. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Wow. But there were a lot this of different places crazy. to have sex. Yeah. In this, yeah. In, this club. in this particular club, there were a lot of places to fornicate. Um, oh, wow. Cool. Not that we saw anything, but maybe we, we did, we, we did only go to like four. So. You know. <laughs> um, wow. But yeah, I also love both the girls I was with, so it was really, it was really fun. Um, That's cool. But yeah, and then we met this this other girl just came up to us, um, who was from Tunisia. <laughs> okay, um, work. <laughs> and so she just she was just like, I like you guys because the other two the girls I was with they had like see through shirts and so you could like see through their nipples and she's like, I like you guys because you're freeing the nipple, and you could also see <sighs> like on. her nipples through her shirt. Um, mm-hmm. And so yeah. Um, so where are you going next then? I leave for Amsterdam, like basically right yeah. after we finish this little recording session. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. So exciting. And I'm staying like right in the red light district, I think. That's so cool. I know. Wow. wow it's going to be crazy. Wow. That's our sign. So guys, Becca just disappeared <laughs> off screen. Becca yeah, just did a little it's disappear. really scary. So um, scary. And so we're going to take that as our sign to cut to a little break. <laughs> but... We will soon be back. Yeah. Guys, I'm scared. Why would you do that? Pretty much when I get scary, October. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much exactly. when I get scary, October. When I get exactly. mad, I lose my composure. Anyway, <laughs> um, we not humping. It's October. <laughs> But today, <laughs> we will be doing something honestly really exciting. Um, you guys have probably all seen the little YouTube videos with celebrities. They'll um, sketch out the playlist of their lives, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like their fave songs, everything going on with them, whatever. Their life story in, in music, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously, me and Quinn are going to do that as the celebrities we are. But... Mm-hmm. in Quinn and I's style obviously we're gonna do it for each other exactly yeah so I will be describing Quinn in a playlist and Quinn will be describing me in a playlist um yeah and I I have to I have to give credit to my friend Becca because I was not envisioning mm-hmm. it like this um but of course it's mm-hmm. our like this is the show that we do together yeah um and so I don't know why it never occurred to me that this is how we would do it but <laughs> it's very our brand yeah, it had to be. Um, it had to be this. And, well, my first question, because part of the reason I was like, part of the reason I thought this was a good idea is because I internally have a playlist of my life. Whoa. Internally. So you've never made it, actually. But no, just... I do. I have made it. But, like, I made it for oh. myself. Okay. It's private. On yes. <laughs> no, I don't even know. I don't even know it, if it's private. Okay. okay. Um, Metaphorically private. Yes. No, actually okay. I've shared it with other people because one time okay, for wow. one of my for one of my extracurriculars in college, they were lose like, after lose for me. <laughs> you cannot anyway. stop losing. Um <laughs> for one of my extracurriculars in college, um mm-hmm. at like our first meeting of like the academic year one year, we were like did like an icebreaker. Uh-huh. And they like my advisor gave us the thing to do like a um just create something that like introduces us to the group in some way. And okay. I of course forgot about it. And then I was like trying to figure out what the fuck I could do in like five minutes. And I was like, Oh, I have this <laughs> playlist actually that I made <laughs> of like songs that have been important to me throughout my life. Um, mm-hmm. And so uh, I showed that and everybody was like, Oh my God, that's really fun. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, this is also a Teen Vogue concept. Teen Vogue is the YouTube channel that does them all. So 
Yeah, and we're not. No litigation, guys. We're giving you credit. Mm -mm. (laughs) And yeah, so I mean, yeah, the way I approached it was like literally like the the eras of your life in song. I don't even necessarily Mm -hmm. know if you will love all these songs. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities for you to find something else you love. That is also what I did with yours. Although, so we are only going to do 10 songs. Mm -hmm. there was one that like i didn't know if you knew i wanted to make a i also it's a list it's a list that i made on the podcast and so okay i got a little expansive Uh uh with what can uh be put on a playlist because (laughs) of course on spotify you know you can add things that aren't songs to playlists (laughs) And so, oh my dear God, <laughs> I think that was something that I wanted to integrate. Wow. I wanted to introduce oh to the universe of. And wow, okay, yeah. And Amazing. so, um, I honestly did not think that creatively, but I'm so happy you did for me. I honestly have to th- th- give the credit to um, my very good friend Caroline because she made like a in high school she made like a joke playlist that was like songs to have sex to, and they were just like the most unhinged things ever. And one thing <laughs> I do remember being on there was president nixon's resignation speech <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh wow <laughs> that's awesome um i can who actually start f- who wants to go first then i'll go okay uh, perf <laughs> okay <laughs> me? perfect me uh, actually, actually, <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna disconnect my phone but it was charging in my computer so okay. might be a little drama um Okay. And so when I started this playlist, I had one, like the first song, the first song, obviously. What do we think mm-hmm. with the first song in the playlist of life? Birth. Yeah. And so I was like, what do I feel epitomizes Becca's birth? And I just imagine your mother, like, not knowing that she's giving birth to an icon like it's <laughs> it must be such a powerful okay. thing actually um yeah and not so, knowing i was gonna give her the rare disease korea where she shook for a month straight because my <laughs> head was so big <laughs> but that was all your iconicity like not being able to like contain <laughs> yeah. itself basically yeah um, so that's how i would pathologize that actually um <laughs> mm-hmm. and with my multiple medical degrees um <laughs> and so i got very like I, I just had like this, I had the one song in my head and then I ended up finding a better song. Um, okay. But it's going to be good. So my first, so excited. the first song on Becca's, uh, on my playlist of Becca's life is Oh Holy Night by Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Slay! Mariah being the first. Yeah. Yeah. Because, well, first of all, I know you love Mariah Carey. Um, mm-hmm. it is the definitive version of Oh Holy Night. It is my, it is my favorite version of Oh Holy Night to listen to because it, it it's so beautiful. It's off the same yeah. album as um, All I Want for Christmas is You. Um, yeah. MC Merry Christmas, but also Mariah Carey. Um, yeah. And uh, honestly, one of the best albums of like the twentieth century. We need to talk about that. <laughs> literally, literally. One of the most significant albums in like a couple centuries um anyway and so um but yeah i just feel like even though becca was born in the literal summer and mm-hmm. oh, holy <laughs> night is about somebody who was born in the literal winter um and that's oh, like so the they, whole thing no 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 jesus well, was born in the summer they think yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> so and, and i perfect, and i was thinking that when i picked it out yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah, um yeah, yeah. and so I don't know. There's just that idea that like, come fall on your knees. And that's very much how I feel whenever I'm in Becca's presence. And so oh. I wanted that represented. Um, oh my God. Because I think, I think there was something <laughs> special about when you were born. Like there was something special about it, like this to is, the magnitude, wow. if not more than like when Jesus was born. This is going to send me into a Gabby Hanna moment. <laughs> <laughs> I am the second coming. I can't like, Ga- sidebar i cannot understand like what's <laughs> going on in gabby hannah's life like i think there are just certain people who i've like heard enough of and like i'll see them but i just won't mm-hmm. register like what's going on at all and that's honestly it's a good example of what happens to you if you join tri sigma 
<laughs> Trisic at Trisic. the University of Pittsburgh. Um, yeah. <laughs> Greek life in general. Um, never forget when Becca was social, really? went from being social chair for sorority it, to know. dropping. No. <laughs> <laughs> All in the same yeah. semester. So Within the so same fast. like three weeks, actually. <laughs> And um, still had to pay dues. <laughs> oh my god! They said, "Yeah." They said, "Something you will not fuck with is our money." <laughs> pay up. Um. But yeah. <sighs> okay. So All right, perfect. We start with Love Holy Night, and then yeah. I was thinking of a young Becca, mm-hmm. and I was thinking of what kind of the things might been might have been formative to you at like circle time, mm-hmm. oh, and like preschool, or even you know getting into elementary school. And what is like more formative to us than the little storybooks our teachers read to us, you know, fairy yeah. tales, uh, you know, some people are always talking about like Taylor Swift, for example, Alice in Wonderland, huge motif in her music. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, people yeah. hear these little fairy tales, cultural zeitgeist, what's in the zeitgeist right now, the little mermaid. Mm-hmm. So people get really invested in these fairy tales. And I was like, hmm, what fairy tale do I think Becca probably internalized at a young age so curious and it's another other than Hansel and Gretel by the Brothers Grimm <laughs> the audiobook will be the second track on the playlist of your life what the fuck <laughs> no walk with me walk with me walk with me because okay. 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 okay what is Hansel and Gretel ultimately about which excess oh <laughs> but but <laughs> Uh-huh. It's also about a witch. And both those things, excess and witch, are very you. So me. And You're so right. I believe I, I envision like a five-year-old Becca not identifying with Hansel and Gretel, like you're supposed to with the book. Mm-hmm. But you actually said, you actually said, I identify with the witch. <laughs> I don't think yeah. the queen, I don't think the queen did anything wrong except for being stupid and letting a little girl push her into the oven. <laughs> being weak yeah yes so, exactly exactly and so i think <laughs> in that moment you were like oh i could be her but i could do it better like i can like you can be excessive uh-huh. but you can be smart enough about it where yeah people I can won't want to push you in a literal oven mm. yeah mm-hmm. and so wow. well, yeah i think you, you really i think you really learned from hansel and gretel yeah whether you realize it or not crazy thing (laughs) crazy thing to be said like ever (laughs) oh my god (laughs) whether you realize it or not oh boy and so that's track two okay and then i'm envisioning becca as a young person and becca's very social i would say Mm -hmm. like not like not like annoying about it like not one of those people who's like oh like no i would never back is cool and so like she doesn't have to do all that really and but like people are still drawn to her wow and so like i imagine becca like in elementary school and even getting into like middle school maybe at this point kind of just like holding court like, just realizing that there are, you know, a lot of different things that can go on, a lot of different people she can meet, starting to kind of understand that about herself. Mm-hmm. And so a song I feel like really represents that, as well as an artist that I want to make sure was represented on your playlist. The third track is going to be Two Doors Down by Dolly Parton. Lovely. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, exactly. Perfect. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Two Doors Down. They're laughing and singing and having a party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true it's true so i've heard yeah wow okay and i feel like so you and i are both Sarah. yeah i think um both you and i are keenly aware of the fact that like our reality is so much our own invention mm-hmm. and i think yeah. two doors down is also about that mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. because it's about being like oh i feel sorry for myself but like a couple doors down Babe, they're having a fucking rager, and why aren't I over there? <laughs> I should go. <laughs> yeah, and so I feel like I feel like you and I kind of have that same mentality that is represented by that song. Yeah, I think so, definitely. And so, wow, yeah. I know you love Dolly. I wanted a little little twang I on love here. Love Dolly. Yeah, yeah. Thank and you for so, including that. Um, 
because <laughs> I famously I don't know if people read the subtext but um on the uh our episode with Lauren when she added graphic tees to the um <laughs> stand list I thought she was gonna add yeah. Dolly Parton yeah me too because Becca was wearing a Dolly Parton, wearing shirt, Dolly Parton and Lauren shirt specifically asked to see her t-shirt <laughs> yeah and so Dolly Parton is not on the stand list yet but guys who knows Who's to say? I also have started putting down things I would add to the stand list if I get another chance. <laughs> hey, I mean, once we're at a deep dives, <laughs> we're gonna have to explain that. Oh, I think we're I think we're definitely gonna be like doing a special where we add things before we even finish the deep dives. Anyway, but nice. anyways, um, so and then so something I'm intrigued about Becca. Okay. is her whole like jock era because <laughs> <laughs> jock. as we talked about as we talked about in this podcast as the thread i've been pulling a little bit from becca is that she was mm-hmm. you know a, a sports star for a little while right um and i feel like i'm drawn to people who used to be like really into sports interesting like i have like several people in my life who were like really into sports at some point and then just like mm-hmm. stopped, stopped. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to do something that recognized the physicality that Becca had during those times. Um, mm-hmm. and so very much does have, mm-hmm. um, and another song that Becca has talked about that I wanted to make sure was represented. Yeah. My fourth track is strut by the cheetah girls. Hey! Everybody get up. Strut like you mean it. Free your mind. Wow. It's perfect. Quinn. No, I imagine you on the field hockey, like, I was about to say court, but on the pitch, we'll say. Straight up also didn't play field hockey. <laughs> oh, you played so- Wait, you didn't play field hockey? I played lacrosse. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You played oh, yeah. lacrosse and soccer. Well, oh, I know what you're thinking. My yeah. mom played field hockey. My mom Which also you knew, played obviously. field hockey. Okay, perfect, perfect. Which you definitely internal that is affecting you more than you think it is. <laughs> My mom playing field hockey, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> but no, I imagine you like on the soccer field, like um, just like you're like you're like trying to get into it, but you're like you're thinking about this song as a way to like get into like the fact <laughs> that you're gonna have to slide tackle someone. Yeah, um, no, I love that. <laughs> it's perfect because it that was in barcelona that uh that song you know mm-hmm. <laughs> wow and there's no such thing as a coincidence especially not making a list for this podcast anyway yeah and so then my fifth track yeah this is where it starts to get a little less based off of like life events well i guess the whole thing is very conceptual because with 10 songs you know it has to be a little conceptual definitely but something i would say about becca is that even before the release of alien superstar becca has been unique (laughs) um and thank you i feel like that's something that becca is good with embracing i feel like you have cracked the code on being able oh, to wow. embrace the things that make you look unique and just you know living in you know the things and so I th- yes and i feel like something that is truly unique about you becca and something that i admire about you is that you're a little mysterious <laughs> yeah i am because i Lack feel communication mostly i feel so unmysterious <laughs> i'm like painfully wow. unmysterious um because i can't like keep anything a secret about my life i'm so confessional (laughs) it's beautiful though listen to other episodes of this podcast um (laughs) you legally can't be a sagittarius and like oh yeah no it's in my nature it's it's something i can't help but becca i do like that you're a little bit more mysterious than i um thank you and you're of course unique and i had a certain artist that i also wanted represented on the playlist that you happen right. to like very much. And so, track number five uh-huh. Bunny is a Rider by Caroline Polachek. I was hoping it would be on here. <laughs> you are, you are, 
You are bunny to me a little bit. <laughs> oh my god, quit! You are you are bunny. Like, uh, thank you. Like, if I know I someone have... who's bunny, I'm like, that's that's <laughs> Becca. Actually, I'm so like, I am so bunny coated. It's crazy. You're so bunny coated. <laughs> Like, it's literally crazy. <laughs> no, there's something about that song that's just so... Oh, my God. It speaks to me, to my soul. And it's so, like, nonsense. It's just absolute nonsense. Oh, yeah. The song... There's also... I love that dimension to it. The song ultimately doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> no, it means nothing. But, like, you can just... Nothing. But that's the good thing about art is, like, you can just prescribe whatever you... What and so, to it? me, yeah. Bunny's just this mysterious girl that, like, the narrator is, like, trying to, like pin down a little bit yeah and what is this podcast day yeah and what is this podcast if not me trying to pin back it down (laughs) like like, whoa whoa whoa, whoa, also why do you have literal or like ghostly orbs floating around your screen have you what do you mean by that everyone (laughs) like (gasps) okay well there was one there right there oh my god it's definitely something with like the lights but there's just every once in a while like a little thing floats by in the corner and it's like looks like fully an orb. I feel like this. I feel like this hotel is a little haunted. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, Becca okay, and I were talking but... about it before we even started recording. There are like weird sounds. Anyway. Yeah. So sorry to bring that up again, but yeah. Um. So yeah. So now I'll be thinking about that. But um. <laughs> but <laughs> great. Yeah, Bunny is a writer. Had to be on this list. I love it. Thank and you. then the next song is not one that I think Becca is familiar with. Okay. But obviously. Becca and I met doing what? Theater. Mm-hmm. Kind of in like a class, but I wanted something that represented theater, theatricality even. Mm-hmm. And also I wanted something, something that Becca and I have always known about ourselves is that we're stars. Yes. <laughs> and so I was like, huh, theater song about being special, about, you know, being cool um, mm-hmm. and famous even because a lot of the rest of the playlist will deal with the motif of fame yes, and stardom. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to start that era off, track number six, I'm the Greatest Star by Barbara Streisand. Okay, so I have not heard it. <laughs> yeah, it's from Funny Girl, which... okay. I haven't very, seen very and, hot topic uh, right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and and I have never seen Funny Girl. Um, but okay. I believe um I don't know when this comes in the musical, but it's basically about like Fanny Bryce, the the funny girl in question. Um uh-huh. like stepping into like her abilities and stuff. And okay, lovely. um the song ends um in the like thing of in the declaration of in all the world so far i am the greatest star and i just got chills yes and it's like <laughs> it's so powerful to hear her sing it um barbara and it's also powerful to hear Leah michelle sing it um mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> which i gotta call out suddenly everyone's Leah michelle supporter <laughs> <laughs> funny you how the down. fucking <laughs> narrative flips funny how the fucking narrative flips after funny beckett girl. and i after beckett and I, <laughs> number yeah. one to her proud of my Literally. faves anyway, um, anyway. after we opened a list with her before her little debut or whatever <laughs> um anyway Literally. and yeah yeah so i'm the greatest star i feel like that really represents you i feel like there is be, even though you are so contemporary in like mm-hmm. how you present yourself there is something yeah. classic about you i think it's my round face <laughs> <laughs> don't you think <laughs> well i can also do a really old accent can't i darling i just love you <laughs> i can also do that and it matches really good with my round face maybe it's because i feel like you could be the next marilyn monroe so Quinn, I also think about that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you also. I think you're the closest thing we have to Marilyn that. Monroe. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you're what Trisha Paytas wants to be. Fire on a day arms. <laughs> I also think that about myself. <laughs> I am like an okay version of Trisha. 
<laughs> in the best way. I mean, I would also name my daughter Malibu Barbie fully. So cunt, so slay. Did you see that TikTok where it's like, um, the person was like, oh, I think it's so funny whenever people like, whenever celebrities name their baby something crazy and then people think it's real. <laughs> like, do you think the baby's name is actually Malibu Barbie? It has to be. It's It has to be. Same, but now I'm like looking at it differently. <laughs> Same <laughs> with like X Ash A12 or whatever Elon Musk and Grimes baby is called. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know. Like, I guess they legally could lie. Yeah. There it went again. <laughs> Little orb. Anyway. <sighs> well, take and that. And then yeah. seven, <laughs> uh, my seventh track is I wanted something that wrote. I had a whole love storyline for you in this playlist of your life, okay. but I don't think in your life. You're going to have relationships, obviously, and like, you know, fall in love, do all that kind of stuff. But it's not going to be something that defines you. If that makes sense. Like, you're never going to be like famous for being in a relationship mm-hmm. or whatever. Unless you break up Muna. Um, yeah. And so. Right. Which, um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so the next track is the little representation of because I believe there is a queer lens with which to view this song but Mm -hmm. also it's about confidence um obviously something you have in in leaps and bounds and Mm -hmm. we cannot make a list about becca without a particular person being included and so track number seven god is a woman by ariana grande Thank you. <laughs> I should have put the James Charles cover on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! You know, my troll era. The, I should have put the yeah yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I heard that wow, song yeah. for the first time when I was drunk in the back of an Uber like six months ago. Like the the, the, the original version of the song, and I was like, yeah, oh, "This is what James Charles sings." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Somebody remade the James Charles song. <laughs> yeah. Um, God is a woman. Such a good choice. I love it. Yeah, femininity, mm-hmm. confidence. It had to there be is here. a certain yeah. <laughs> Simply had divinity, to. divinity, even. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spirituality. Mm-hmm. OMG. OMG. Art. The music video. Yep. Beauty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there is so much. Yeah, there's a lot of Becca in that song. And so yeah. it had to be on the list. And so that's going to be a little mm-hmm. romance era. Cool. And so we get to track number eight. And it's something I've talked about on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. But um, it's 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 again we're pushing the medium of what a playlist can be forward a little bit with this podcast is what I like to believe. Yes. Um, and so I'll just say that the eighth track is going to be Julia Fox, comma the hottest topic, which is an episode of the Forbidden Fruits podcast. Um, okay. which is Julia Fox's podcast. Um, yeah. I listened to it in preparation for our Julia Fox episode. Mm-hmm. And um, it was basically Julia and her co-host talking after like the Vanity Fair, like Oscars party, which is, I feel mm-hmm. like really like her first peak of like fame and stuff, because like, it felt like that was like when she like really like popped on, like kind of became like broke through into like the full like zeitgeist a little bit yeah and it's basically just her talking about her own like fame mm-hmm. and the interest that people have in her and it's just very becca wow i really need to listen to it now it actually is very <laughs> mpj because it is somebody like just talking it, it's somebody facilitating about a conversation about somebody else's <laughs> fame like it's it's i'm i'm the co-host and I'm the co-host and you're Julia and I'm just like yeah, yeah so what like <laughs> you're like you're famous yeah crazy yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> lovely yeah I just love Julia Fox is just so mother she's, she's never so been mother. wrong I dare her to be wrong once no guys 
unfortunately she cannot be we also (laughs) recorded the podcast like we recorded that podcast over a month ago at this point um so much more has happened yeah and so uh, the whole thing of her putting like valentino to work um Mm -hmm. (laughs) like happened (laughs) um her tiktok has really been popping off in that time most certainly she's and and everything i see i'm like it's more and more affirmed she's the perfect literally a stand behind us so hard Mm -hmm. i mean i didn't think we would be wrong yeah so yeah perfect okay and so yeah that's the eighth track and we're already at the ninth track that would mean wow and this is another artist i wanted to make sure was included it's actually my favorite song by this artist and i i just again like when i think of becca i think of fame like (laughs) fame is one of the motifs of becca's life and this song is about fame it's a beautiful narrative Mm -hmm. it is something i believe i have a theory that i heard like because the song is a little bit older i have a theory Mm -hmm. i heard it in utero like when i was in my mother's you know womb yeah and that's why i have it like imprinted on me and so i have such a connection to the song Uh um and so the ninth track is gonna be lucky by britney spears (sighs) Uh, I love this song. <laughs> and she cries, 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 and the at the No, just the, <laughs> just the iconicity of this is a story about a girl named Lucky. A girl named Lucky. This is a story about a girl named Lucky. It honestly was a song that really helped me get my impression down. <laughs> yeah. and the music video for it is oh my favorite movie it's oh my yeah favorite movie <laughs> and the winner is best actress lucky <laughs> lucky isn't she lucky like, this hollywood girl yeah and so she, this song is really says. gonna epitomize because Beck, because like anyone else becca's mm-hmm. gonna receive fame and then she's gonna struggle with it mm-hmm. yeah it, I it's know. a hard thing to navigate especially in the age we're in yeah um there are new challenges to fame and you know when becca gets famous any day now there could be new challenges Mm -hmm. that we don't even know about in this in this current moment and so i believe becca's gonna have a moment where she says because that's ultimately what the song is about is it's like that um it's it's a very powerful concept of oh i have everything i've ever wanted why didn't that fix Mm -hmm. everything about me yeah, um, I'm still which I find, Yeah, which I found that so intriguing. And, and Brittany why was, do these tears come at night? Why do exactly. these tears if, if there's nothing missing in her life, then why do these tears come at night? And that's and that's something a lot of us ask ourselves ultimately. Um uh heard. Heard. And so, yeah. and so then Becca's gonna like consider being like, oh, do I withdraw from the public eye? Do I move to Switzerland? Um <laughs> Move to Finland uh, with all my fans. <laughs> <laughs> Become like the blessed Madonna of Finland. Um, <laughs> but no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no. No, you're going to be someone who accepts the fame, accepts the excess that mm-hmm. your whole life has been leading up to. That's why yeah. the 10th song on the playlist is going to be What I Want by Muna. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Wow, to go from lucky to what I want. Exactly. Perfect. You had, no, because yeah. you had a moment. You had a moment. Yeah, it had and you're to. Like, you, cause it's so important to reflect. It's so important to reflect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. believe that you're about right. life. But you're right. if you reflect and figure out, mm, no, I think I was on the right track, baby. I was born this way. Much uh-huh. like you were. Uh-huh. And you say, no, actually, <laughs> when I see my friend put something on her tongue, <laughs> I'm going to ask for one. Ask for one. Because... That's just what I what want. I want. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh my god. I've been saying that for years at this point. <laughs> um, it's, it's so exhausting. I was like, yeah. keep saying this. <laughs> it's so exhausting to keep trying to teach you woes. Um, <laughs> Boom. Perfect. And so yeah, I feel like you will learn to accept it, learn to navigate it, and that's not fully what what I want is about. But you know, <laughs> yeah, discover my pleasure. Pleasure. Exactly. Exactly. 
Um, and so yeah, that was my playlist of Becca's life. The fact that I started at a Love holy it. night by Mariah Carey and ended at what, I, a, want what I want by Muna. This is a queer agenda. <laughs> this is the queer agenda. <laughs> Our podcast uh, could be like used in like a Congress hearing to be like, this is the queer agenda. <laughs> no literally the shit we they talk to say, the shit we get up to on this little show because we're like the opposite of alex jones <laughs> <laughs> we're the anti-joe rogan <laughs> literally uh it's entirely possible okay <laughs> well quinn i loved that thank you so much thank you um i think i will start with actually diving into the audiobook of hansel and gretel <laughs> i'm assuming it's the original grim brothers Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was Perfect. also important Perfect. because you're very Grim Brothers. You're not. You <laughs> yeah, know, I don't even. Know, like I don't even know Disney what other flop. Hans Christian Andersen who flopped. Yeah, who? yeah, literally. Mm-hmm. Who else wrote fairy tales? <laughs> get a job, um, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Hans Christian Andersen. How about get a job, Christian Andersen? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> so think about that. Um, wow, that was extremely lovely. Um, I love that fame was a big motif because it's something that I honestly did really also you know focus in yours <laughs> <laughs> My God. obviously obviously um i guess i'll just dive right into quinn's life playlist um so much like you i'm starting at birth mm-hmm. and i was like i really want to capture a lot of quinn's like roots in this right um and i know you were born in a barn correct <laughs> Yes, actually, yeah. Yes, and so when all the animals looked at you on the floor <laughs> of the barn, all bloodied and birthed, they were like, okay, um, you know, we see you for who you are, and you're Sagittarius, you're just like us. Your first song has to be Wild One by Faith Hill. <gasps> Why well, I don't know that one. <laughs> okay, so... um. I think you'll appreciate her. Do you know her? Yes, Faith Hill, yeah. Okay. Um, I think she really represents your country roots. Mm. And it's basically about a crazy little child who was born to run free. <laughs> oh my god. What's more you than that? Sounds exactly like me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I think actually Faith Hill's horse actually did get the scoop on you and did write this song about you. She went and whispered a little secret in her ear. Yeah, she have made. You ever, have you ever seen that one? Have you ever seen that one meme of like a horse, and then there's just like a hand holding a like flip phone up to its ear? Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, it was fully that. Like the government had sent this horse to you. Um, <laughs> the horse called yes. Faith Hill. Like, listen, what the <laughs> fuck just happened? <laughs> Look at what I saw. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, yeah, and I think like the countryness of this song really is like you know your your humble beginnings. Uh-huh. Um, if even I've never seen the barn you were born in, it could be beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Again, just to reiterate, Quinn was born inside a barn. <laughs> that is the lore. That is the lore. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Per- perfect. Okay. Um, and then the second track. There's really no good reason why I put this on here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was trying to capture. I truly believe to my <laughs> the deepest part of my soul that you were put here for a divine reason. <laughs> um, I've talked about <laughs> about how like I, like you are a mix of all these cosmic things in one in one entity. It's so beautiful. Um, and really, the first song that came to mind was "Return of the Mac" by Mark Morrison. Oh my um, god. Which, you know, return of the Mac Man and now. It has a groovy beat as well. Uh-huh. Um and we've definitely never spoken about this song or anything, mm-hmm. but um it just feels like very much you and that like, yeah, mm-hmm. I am back. Yeah. I am back to do what I want to do. Yeah. There's and a part of me that believes I've done mine, this all before. I'll do yeah. it. Yeah. There we go. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You are definitely someone who has had a past life. Mm-hmm. Many. Actually. If anyone were to have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe you right away. I do believe. I do believe I am. If not on my last life, I'm on one of my last lives. Like if I do in- allow myself to engage with past life discourse, I do believe. I think this might be it. Whoa. Your and final my, lessons. And then my soul. Will go, and then my soul will go elsewhere. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. hey, go crazy. <laughs> no, I think about past yeah, lives. I think about here. past lives a lot, actually. And then I think about like, because like I'm kind of like the oldest soul I know. Because like even like it's weird because like I think my parents like they have like younger souls than I do. Because do you also have you also ever heard like apparently oh. like part of past lives is like you kind of like you kind of travel around people. If you have many past lives, sorry. Like you kind of like, like you kind of like live your lives with like the same souls a little bit. And so like you and I might've like known each other. Like you you and I might've known each other in like multiple past lives. I would definitely believe that. Mm -hmm. I would definitely believe that. Yeah. Wow. What I feel like we would have maybe been um, sisters in some way. Yeah. I could see us on a pirate ship being sisters. In Babylon. Oh, Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, so we've established the foundation of you, your divine purpose, your upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this is where it starts to really get into your personality is developing. Okay. And it's also, I think, where this the seed is being planted of the fame monster in you, which is definitely an aspect of you. So track number three is... When I Grow Up by the Pussycat Dolls. <laughs> yeah. When I Grow Up. <laughs> when you're famous. I'm yeah. A star. I'm a star. I want to be in movies. movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's something you have the potential to do. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, but that you have to have that want, that eagerness. And mm-hmm. I think it's, you know, I'm the showing gumption. that here. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be it's careful also- what you also, in a less, in a less, you know, investigative way than Mm -hmm. lucky yeah even nicole scherzinger is calling out be careful what you wish for because you just may get it that's true in the in the best of ways and the worst and what and what happens when the dog catches the mailman no one knows is that a line in the song (laughs) No, it's it's be careful what you wish for because you just might get it is. But um, have you ever heard that expression? It's like the dog who caught the car. No, it's it's because like dogs chasing no one... cars and stuff. And like what happens when the dog catches the car? Like, what is it going to do? No one knows. Yeah, because it so rarely happens. But also, like, what could a dog really do to a car? You know, but if the dog caught the mailman, he would bite it. Maybe. <laughs> perhaps if your dog isn't socialized well and trained well (laughs) your dog shouldn't be fucking biting people side note um europe people just like walk around with their dogs like not on leashes it's crazy but the dogs are like much better behaved no like i haven't felt like yeah like american dogs i do not trust but people will fully also there aren't like rules like you can just have your dog like on public transit or in restaurants That's fun. Like sometimes you just pull up to a restaurant and there'll full be like a dog in there. <laughs> and you're just like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine how many jokes there are that the dog will take the bill. <laughs> Disgusting. Thinking about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's part of the reason. That's part of the reason they actually outlawed that in America because like yeah, that's a very American like, joke. Can't. Like yeah. <laughs> Like we and the president or that. whoever was like, no, <laughs> we can't put service workers through that. It was actually Michelle Obama's first little first lady thing. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. So, um, going along with the foundations of your personality building up, again, there's just such a strong Sagittarius part of you. Mm-hmm. Like you're just such Sagittarius. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I've established before, you are wild and I think it's beautiful about you. And you are actually someone who I find bursts out of bubbles that people may want to put you in. I just think you are so, you are such a splash of life and it's almost like you, I don't know, you can't, I don't know, you can't be like contaminated or you can't be like, you can't be like boxed in, it's almost like you can't be tamed. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Another Sagittarius. <laughs> yes, my sister. My yeah. sister. Yes. So obviously 
mm, can't be tamed is just so you um mm-hmm. and i hope you listened to it when you were growing up i knew about it it wasn't it- like on i don't think it was like on my ipod but like i knew of it as an entity okay. yeah it's literally so you yeah and something i'm gonna and- do is defy expectations and what did miley do with that track defy expectations literally because she was basically mm, still hannah montana when this came out Mm -hmm. so but she said i'm gonna be i'm gonna use a lot of imagery of like a black angel breaking Mm -hmm. out of a cage yeah yeah and guess what i want to fly i want to whatever i want to go i want to drive i want to be a part of something yeah i want to be part of something i don't know what am i doing right now if not being a part of something i don't know exactly look at you (laughs) Ugh, perfect. I didn't know this hotel before 8 p.m. yesterday. <laughs> here you are living and in here it. Here I am living in being it. Being haunted by it. Being haunted by it. So intimate. In yeah, such <laughs> fall activity. Anyway. Okay. Um, next, I think with this song, I was tapping into that I have the whole foundation of you laid out now. Mm-hmm. Now you're growing up. You're mm-hmm. seeing the world around you. Maybe you're a little bit disappointed, right? Because yeah. everyone is so regular. Everyone's so basic. Everyone's so boring. And, you know, maybe like in school, as you're, you know, going through elementary, middle school, you're like, wow, what's what's really what's really there? What can I like? How can I harness all of my talent? And how can I like live my fullest life right now even? Because obviously mm-hmm. it's something you always want to be doing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you were able to access that always. So there's always a little bit of struggle, especially when you're growing up and you're such a, like I've said, such a unique, wild person Mm -hmm. that, you know, when you're growing up with society, it's like, oh my God, can I even even deal with this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just needed more. And that's why track number five is Give Me More by Britney (laughs) Spears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like they're probably saying, give me, give me more. Give me, give me, give me more. Um the black yeah. album is very me. Oh, I almost put I almost put um a piece of me on um. this, <laughs> but um yeah, that would be I feel like that's a future playlist of your life like he sent me was so there. my junior year of high school like that was that was very my junior year of high school it's a crazy song crazy song <laughs> um but yeah so yeah also just this yeah that air of britney is just so you and mm-hmm. give me more is so like yeah I don't know. We can get out like this. Like no. there's no one around. No, the just the just the iconicity of it's Britney bitch and then the dong 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 dong. Yeah, like Incredible that page. alone, I feel like is so me. Another and yeah. we have to say it. Another Sagittarius sister. Yup. The incredible Britney yep. Spears. <laughs> Literally, um, this is also a great time to point out Addison Ray. This is a side note. She is like, I fear like she is so, she just <laughs> is saying so hard. Oh my God. I think I literally love her and stay in her. This uh uh-uh, sex to dad for. No, the but leaks anyway. of her album are so like crazy good. And yeah, I do believe she's kind of being smart about transitioning oh, because yeah. I think she's trying, like, obviously not that she's an industry plant like i don't i don't believe she was like an actual industry plant but like her music career is like gonna be plantish because she was like famous yeah. before that but anyway yeah of course but now she just has resources and stuff so like nothing new really but mm-hmm. i think she's i think she's very like and her team are like very deliberately like taking a second so yeah. it doesn't feel like she was just like boom yeah know? we'll just do this yeah like they're kind of getting us used to her Mm-hmm. No, Addison Rae is. I do feel she does have gay icon energy now. Yeah. Oh my God. Did you see the photos of her and Charlie? No. <laughs> they look so good. It was truly no, but that was truly one of the things that started to get me like really being like, do I have to like Addison Rae? Because like, if Charlie XCX is friends with you, I'm like, it's gonna like I you know I have to 
trust Charlie. Yeah. Charlie XCX also, though, I could see being a clout chaser a little bit. <laughs> Which she's entitled okay. to do. Yeah. <laughs> and let her go. Let her do that. And let her go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. Moving on to your next song. Now we're in the more, the older stage of your life, maybe like high school era. Yeah. Um, you're really, you're coming into your queerness. Yeah. You're coming into yourself totally at the, maybe like a really comfortable place in mm-hmm. who you are and everything. Also maybe exploring love. This song, I can't imagine a, truly a better song for you. We've talked about it before. We will talk about it again. It is Kesha's Rainbow. (gasps) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's just so lovely. (laughs) Kicking your feet back and forth. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I do love that. That that song is important to me. Um, Yeah. I think there's also like a theatricality about it in some way. Oh, a thousand percent. Like the story. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. That too. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! And you probably don't remember this, but I think I've told you. I think I think we went through the story on my on the high school episode. But when we were when we went on um, our retreat in high school, when I led like my high school's like retreat and stuff, mm-hmm. you had to like give a talk, and at the end of your talk, you had a song. Mm-hmm. And my high school boyfriend and I were leading the retreat together. Um, mm-hmm. And he was like, I read his talk and stuff. And he was like, I can't figure out a song though. And I was like, and I read it. I was like, mm, have you ever heard Rainbow by Kesha? I remember this. And then and he, he was used like, it. it was perfect. Yeah, and he used it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, and that's, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's why it's also attached to your in love era, you know? So yes. I think mm-hmm. oh, that's all encapsulated in this tiny, perfect song. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. What a lovely one. Yeah. Uh, great song. Great <laughs> <Wow>. album. No <laughs> notes. Thank you, Kesha. Thank you, Kesha. Um, now, flipping it back mm-hmm. to... Uh, it's not your villain era, but it's your me era. <laughs> not me, Taylor Swift. Not me, Taylor Swift. Not me <laughs> as in me as an individual, as uh-huh. a human being person. Because um, my independence is truly very important to me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think, again, you've rediscovered your true passion, your true drive. Mm-hmm. And honestly, everything about you does come down to this in a way, in the in, in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. This is the steer, the steering. What am I trying to say? This song steers your life. <laughs> and obviously I had to put this person on the playlist because I'm not stupid or dumb. And I'm not homophobic either. <laughs> Whatever you want to say, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Becca is not being the homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But of course, track seven has to be Applause, Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's the art pop yeah. representation on my playlist. I know because yeah. if it, it had to be art pop, but yeah, um, and also it's just one of the best songs ever made, probably. Oh yeah, like oh, yeah. are you dumb? No, yeah. <laughs> um, and there definitely is a part of you that you know does love. I mean, that why we all do theater. Mm-hmm. oh yeah oh the affirmation <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 affirmation is big you for me guys for yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so again please comment down below yeah um, <laughs> talk about what you love about me hey Becca mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah applaud yeah mm-hmm. 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 that's a great yes. that's a great inclusion I was wondering what the Lady Gaga I, I knew there was going to be a Lady Gaga song yeah there I was wondering what it was going to be yeah <laughs> perfect okay okay what track are we um, just so i can prepare myself that was seven this is about to be eight okay okay so i am tapping into now with track number eight your breakup era <gasps> your devastation era maybe 
Oh my god. Um yeah. And <laughs> and I am scared and I maybe you know that it 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 is going to be super cut by lord. <laughs> Listen, (laughs) it's a fantastic song. And it also is, I think, a fundamental part of you. In my head, I do everything right when I call you forgive and not fight. And guys, this is how this is how well Becca knows me. Like she knows that that's like (laughs) such an important song in my life and to me as well. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that song is like, oh. Oh my god. It, I'll, yeah. I'll never forget the day I was driving to work, <laughs> summer 2019. <laughs> I was on the highway. The song <laughs> came on the damn shuffle. And what did I do? But started bawling in my car mm-hmm. alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, oh my God. Uh, and it's, oh man. Like, I don't even know if it's a thing that you like, you romanticize people, but the song is like, just the like, Oh, why can't we just have like the best moments and not have <laughs> the terrible mm. things? Like, yeah. uh, it's such and like it's... from an optimist point of view. Yes, and I, do, and I do believe I do believe the conceit of the song is which is when you look back on things, you don't remember the bad parts of them. Mm-hmm. Which can yep. be which the song is also is saying can be good, can be bad. Yeah, yeah, um, the balance so, of that crazy. Yeah. Uh, love that song. It belongs on this playlist. It is on the play. It is on my. That might be the first track you've actually like gotten on my version. Oh, perfect. Okay. On the playlist good. of Quinn's life, there's Quinn's version and there's Becca's version. Weird. Return of the Mac was not on yours, but um, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I'm, not say- I'm not saying I'm perfect and infallible. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yep. Supercut. Supercut is on that. Anyway beautiful um, perfect summer 2019 got a lot of tracks on the playlist of my life a lot mm, of a lot was going on that was a formative summer anyway yeah Ugh. well mm-hmm. um this is more of this song number nine is you have specifically described sort of coming into college and uh, a long time in college actually as your flop era mm-hmm um, and I think I did want something to represent that because, you know, high highs, low lows, those lows need to be, you know, noticed mm-hmm. and heard yeah. and seen. And so I did choose something that from an artist, obviously we love and an artist also that um, I know you love so much. <laughs> okay. I just have to say it. It's backseat. Charlie XCX, Carly Rae Jepsen. In the backseat. It's just like, it's crazy because it's on Pop 2, one of the best albums of all time. Can and I it's say? Somehow, it's so profound. Yeah. I wanted to talk about Pop 2 today because I listened to it today. Because Pop well, 2. I saw you posted tears on your. And it's which, which, crazy. Which, uh, tears? We need to talk about how good of a song that is. Anyway. It makes me it makes me pass out. I can't, I can't, I can't talk about it. <laughs> I can't talk about it. I, I get queasy. Um, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah pop, two, pop 2 is like, a f- weirdly, weirdly to me, it, it, it is a fall album. <laughs> Honestly, fine. It, to me, it's year round. No, to me, yeah, you, it, is, it transcends the season. Because there is yeah. truly so much going on in that album. Because I feel like people, like, only, a, but there's like so much depth to that. Oh, album oh. mixtape or whatever it's insane no it goes yeah. from well it goes from back seat like the first couple of tracks are just crazy because it starts with back seat yeah, it's which two two women i love mm-hmm. and rap like nobody's business charlie xcx oh and then it goes in yeah. out of my head and then lucky <laughs> i like, sent my friend lucky by charlie xcx i sent my friend lucky by charlie xcx and um and i said this is probably the perfect song to have a first dance to at a wedding <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh wow that's imagine funny. my parents being at my <laughs> wedding and my first dance song and then it goes into <laughs> 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 
Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Um, oh my yeah, God. no. But backseat is not. Oh, I'm wide awake lying next to him. Uh, alone, yes. alone, 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 alone. It's like, it's so beautiful, but mm-hmm. like. There's a longing you know, to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like a certain sadness. Yes. Um, which ultimately maybe is what a flop era is. Who's mm-hmm. to say? So I, I did have to take note of that. But much like how we do everything, I had to end on a positive, which I think mm-hmm. you are in a positive time in your life. Yes. Very and, positive, I would say. Mm-hmm. And there was one Sagittarius missing from this playlist. <laughs> and also, <clears throat> like, I think you are, much like me, are in your baby fame era. Like, we are honestly baby celebrities at this point we just must grow we must drink mommy's milk (laughs) taylor swift send us your almond milk um (laughs) almond milk it's fine (laughs) that wasn't the sanitarius i was expecting though no 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 i call her mommy sorry i confused you oh oh the misdirect oh maybe it is the sanitarius i'm thinking about them probably is okay um okay so right now basically you're in the opposite of a flop era oh <laughs> no, I, no I'm, I'm here <laughs> okay opposite of a flop era mm-hmm. so number 10 has to be llc by Nicki minaj <gasps> oh my which goodness. i don't know if you're familiar with no did you think it was gonna be Nicki? i did think it was gonna be Nicki. okay perfect and then you said taylor and i was like oh is it gonna be taylor no, I was um uh yeah, I, I messed up. I messed up really bad. No. I'm gonna no, have to no, make no. an apology letter. Okay. No, no, no. Um <laughs> but LLC. <clears throat> I just took her name and made that bitch a LLC. <laughs> Stuff a couple checks right here. Switch switch it up just to see. Okay, <laughs> but okay, it's a perf it's basically a perfect yeah. song about being so famous you can name drop someone. Um and then they're a low-level celebrity. Also, to you, he's rich and famous, but he's just a guy to me. <laughs> she said that. I would you, say something like that. Famous, but I would, I would say something like that, actually. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm King Kong. Name's still going ding dong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why not? No, that's gonna be that's gonna be your and I's friendship at some point. They're gonna be like, you guys are like so famous like how do you guys find time to film a podcast what do you guys what's it like being friends with each other and then we're gonna be like that's just like becca yeah it's just to me it's she's no just deal. becca we're gonna be those famous people it's like just a guy to me she's just that girl i met in directing class <laughs> she's still that to me she's still that to me that mm-hmm. girl i knew once when yeah. <laughs> once when i've seen her <clears> through <throat> a lot um <laughs> <laughs> uh what's the most embarrassing thing you've seen me do that's such an amazing question, actually. Because, like, I don't even know. Like, you know, <sighs> people are like, uh, it's just the girl who, like, shat her pants at the whatever. The most embarrassing thing I've seen you do. It's hard I feel because like I saw you fall one time. <laughs> but I don't remember. <laughs> you said, let me answer the question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> let me air your business out. You very likely have seen me fall. Um, I feel like everyone has. No, and it's always like (laughs) people are always so concerned when I do it. I'm like, guys, stop. It's fine. Um, (laughs) I am gonna cry, but it's fine. (laughs) What? What's the most embarrassing? I feel like I feel like you're not. I don't feel like you're somebody who doesn't get embarrassed, but I feel like you're somebody who's good at not showing the fact that you're embarrassed. (laughs) I think I've really tried to work on not feeling, not worrying about embarrassment. Yes, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. Embar- I don't know why, but thinking of like when we did active analysis and voice and movement. But like that's not because you did something embarrassing. It's because the sci- assignment like inherently called for something embarrassing. Oh yeah. I got what you mean. Like I've seen her roll on the floor doing oh, a yeah. monologue. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That is pretty embarrassing out of context. Oh yeah, like if somebody saw a video. I'm sure mine is too. Yeah. Like like yeah. Like all the all the etudes it's, I did, like if I watched them back, it would be crazy it's to watch. Crazy thing to do, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Word. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. 
<laughs> All right, shut the hell up. <laughs> oh my god! So we've done it. Yeah, literally. I have so I have actually. You have, I think, thirty six minutes of stuff to listen to, and I probably have multiple hours. <laughs> there are a few books and podcast episodes <laughs> on mine. <laughs> I will try to get through it, though. I will try. And that's and that's uh, what I wanted to do. Well, the Hansel and yeah. Gretel audiobook can't be that long. How long is Hansel and Gretel? Like thirty pages. Oh man, I thought it was like a true book. I don't. I don't think so. What is it? A magazine then? <laughs> A pamphlet? <laughs> no, I think it's like a storybook. Oh, okay. I guess it does have to canonically because now I've made the decision that's the Brothers Grimm version, but I don't think it was right. like a. I don't like think it was thing. like a novel. Okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So I think Beck and I are going to throw another little break, and then mm-hmm. we'll be back. I'm going to stick my tongue out. Keep your tongue in your mouth. Guys, <laughs> I'm scared. <gasps> oh! Uh, uh, oh, that's uh, giving me quite a fright. Zuta law. Um, uh, <laughs> and we're back. Right. <laughs> um, and so now, it comes the time in the program. Mm-hmm. Well, we would have a comment corner, but... We do have ones we could read, but inbox is a little dry, Oops. and this episode is long. So, um, yeah. <laughs> we're running long already, <laughs> and I got a train to catch. Anyway, um, we, gotta, we gotta call it, guys. Call it, but we would never call it without doing our little segments. <laughs> and so, we will now move into our jump scares of the week, which is a time in the week where we were petrified, so afraid actually we turned to stone and said, "Oh." And so <laughs> it was really a visual <laughs> gag on the podcast. Anyway, rock on. Um, and so yeah, like when you see Medusa's head, and you're like, oh. <gasps> oh my god! I was just thinking of yeah, Medusa. Did Medusa actually <laughs> turn people to stone, or was she so terrifyingly ugly that people <gasps> just died when they looked at her? Well, you know what? People say that actually she was so terrifyingly beautiful <gasps> that the whole or snake thing is is supposed to be you know phallic metaphor as Freud would say that that the dicks was going up when they saw her face yeah it turned to stone babe yeah that's great she's so powerful let's talk about Mm -hmm. if we ever do bad bitches in history medusa medusa number one number one bad bitch actually snake for hair you can't outdo Snake the doer. Hair. You can't outdo the doer. Something about it. Anyway, <laughs> Literally. Um, Obviously, Uma Thurman's uh, <gasps> no. portrayal of her. <laughs> we need, the iPod I, touch being the... <laughs> we need to talk about how I am a Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief movie apologist. I love that movie. I do, too. I do, too. Yeah. Like, is Honestly, it... I love all of them. I honestly think the Percy Jackson movies are good, but just not in the context of the books. Well, sure. But I am really excited for the Disney Plus series, though. Me too. It should be good. I will be tuning in. Anyway. Mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. Becca, what is something that <clears throat> turned you to stone this week? Okay. So, actually, it happened a few hours ago. <gasps> when Mine's recent as well. This- oh, okay. Okay. Wow. Ugh. So touchy. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Um. I was helping a nice woman, woman at work. Woman. Um, we were having great conversation. We were chatting. It was flowing. It was lovely. She was such a gal. I just mm-hmm. loved her. Um, and then she tells me she owns like a little. She's also very young and beautiful. Um, she owns a little plastic surgery clinic thing. And I was like, oh, oh perfect. You're going to give me lip injections. Because it's been something I really wanted for a long time. Mm-hmm. Because my mouth is so small. Mm-hmm. And I just... Becca and I both have small mouths. Mm-hmm. It's something that's crazy. Mm-hmm. But I just like... I love... Honestly, I love the look of when I can tell lips have been injected. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. And they look so good always. And it's like... Yeah, it's just perfect. And so I'm talking to her. I'm like trying to butter her up so she can like give me free lip injections. So... I'm talking about I'm being so nice 
Like I want a coupon or something. I talked to her for like half an hour. Oh, actually, my location doesn't do lips. Girl, what the fuck is the point then? Be fucking for real right now. Be <laughs> fucking for real. Literally. Like, I know I'm on the clock and I am liter- like, I'm supposed to help you. But you can't even. Like, so you, you don't can't do- even. Hi, Bella. <laughs> so you claim to own a cosmetic surgery practice, a med. Um, or what do they call it? A med spa or whatever. Whatever the fuck uh-huh. it is they cetera, should do cetera, cetera, cetera. where you live at. And yeah. you're not going to do the most popular <laughs> like yeah plastics or uh, lip injections Literally. have to be the most popular cosmetic they procedure must be. and so what now i'm gonna have to fit pay full price <sighs> it's Botox, not something you should I'm have to begging. deal with i am begging local spa and surgery places please sponsor us please someone get back a lip injections i would look so good like imagine how good i would look with my lips just a little fatter anyway <laughs> so yeah, I'm a little bit uh a little bit bummed about that. That I'm gonna no, I got angry. I that. I got really angry for you like in that moment when yeah, you told me. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Cause I ha- I'm a woman scorned, basically. Yeah. Don't ever mess with a girl's ability to get lip injections. Number lip injections rule- should be free. LA. <laughs> Literally. Government mandated, actually. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> for ugly people. So <laughs> I'm not ugly though, so it doesn't make sense. Weird <laughs> that I said that, but anyway. So Becca has to pay full price still. <laughs> that yeah, yeah. So and that's sorry, what she's yeah. trying to avoid. You know, the government <laughs> is always looking out for the ugly people, which is like discrimination <laughs> almost. Oh my god, for pretties. <laughs> pretties. Okay, well. Pretty so trima- Oh wow. Not bad anyway. for six oh seven a.m. Anyway, <laughs> uh, well, okay. So, Quinn, <laughs> what was your jump scare this week? My jump scare this week happened. I was on public transit again in mm-hmm. Germany this time, but yes. it was not related to public transit. I haven't really had any issues in Germany except when I did get here initially. I got on the wrong train. Anyway, Oops. but I only rode it for like two stops, and I was like, "Let me turn this around." Actually, anyway, so. I've been reading a book in my trip to Germany. I started it on my bus to um, Berlin from Prague. Mm-hmm. It's called Dante, or it's called Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. Oh. Very good book. Probably the best book I've read this year. It's about um, these two 15 year old boys who are kind of both loners and then they like come together and like become friends with one another beautiful book beautiful stuff about like aging and like coming of age and stuff and mm-hmm. it's really like the way I was relating to this 15 year old like truly like made me be like oh I don't know nothing about anything like I feel like that's something <laughs> something I'm realizing about being an adult is that like I feel like the secret to being an adult is realizing that nobody knows anything really mm-hmm. and like nobody's ever really sure of what they're doing And, like, it's one of the things you have to unlearn from, like, your childhood because you just, Mm -hmm. like, assumed that adults were, like, these people who always knew what to do and who were right and stuff like that. And then you get – you become an adult and you're like, oh, mama, I don't know what the fuck is going on ever. (laughs) Literally. I used to think I was a genius, but now I'm 22, as Lord once said. Uh, Literally. I'm more honest there because I've never been written. Anyway, anyway, anyway. How can a person know everything at 18, but nothing at 22? Nothing at 22. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so, and so, and so. I'm reading this book. I'm reading this book. And I won't spoil the book, but something that the whole book is leading to happens. And I'm like. (laughs) And I was intrigued and excited because I was reading on my little nook. Mm -hmm. And um, it said I was on page like. 290 something of 319 and so I was like oh my god like this isn't the end of the book like I have I have like more to read I get to read about how things go from here I turn the page it says like oh Simon and Schuster publishing I'm confused I turn another page it's like keep reading for a preview of the next book in the series it was over. No. It was 
over. No. And I said, that's the word. I said, hold on, actually. I said, hold on. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> how could you do this to me? How could you? It's terrible. Why did you do that, do that, do that, do that, do that <laughs> to me? <laughs> it was honestly, it was one. Of, and guys, and guys, I'm going to be honest. My nook is like one of my new obsessions. Yeah. I'm obsessed with her. I need to give her a name, much like Tiffany and um, Chloe. Like oh, she needs wait. a name yeah, a little yeah. bit. Um, Do you feel I'm Genevieve obs- at all? That might be, that, no. that's a good one. Because Genevieve is a bookie girl. It. Something about the name yeah. Genevieve, she's bookie. She's bookish. Yeah, yeah. she's smart. She's yeah, smart. She, she's sure. a smart, you can't be named Genevieve and not be like a genius. Exactly. Um, so, something to think about. Anyway, that's a good one. That's a great instinct you have Becca yeah yeah. um (laughs) and but I have to be I'm I'm a little mad Genevieve because she had misled me yeah and she was telling lies and she was perpetrating falsehoods even and yeah perpetrator yes exactly and I I can't even talk about it and so (laughs) it's terrible Um, because usually you know it's fine when you know that there's another like if i had a physical book in my hand i'd be like okay well Uh Mm uh-huh yeah but uh, on an ebook you just be ripping through it and yeah you don't look at what's i literally went because i was planning i was going to dinner and i was like oh i'm gonna like i'm gonna like finish the book over dinner Mm -hmm. babe before i even got to dinner the book was over and is it the second book is not out yet? No, the second book is out. But oh. okay, this is the gag of the century, right? Um, okay. That book was published in 2012. Okay. The sequel, I believe it was published in 2021. Oh my dear God. So Thank imagine. Thank God. Literally. Yeah. Literally. Imagine. I don't believe everything happens for a reason. Sometimes, <laughs> though. Things do happen at the right time. And I believe I read this book mm-hmm. at the right time. Because if I read this book and there wasn't a sequel, I'd be like, oh, I'm pissed. Yeah. Pissed. Oh, I'm pissed. <laughs> and the sequel does. Me off. And the sequel does pick up exactly where the where the oh, first book ended off. That's crazy. Which is kind of great. Yeah. Because I feel like that's usually not the thing. But like yeah. it does pick up like right like the next moment like wow yeah insane that mm-hmm. they waited then nine years to make yeah that public. i feel like it was like a <laughs> pandemic book because it came out in 2021 wow and so i feel Crazy. like that and i like start i like because this time because this time i went in the mm-hmm. book and i said okay so what's the actual page count so i can <laughs> record the X. so i can understand mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I read in the acknowledge, like I read like a- the first line of the acknowledgements or whatever, but I didn't want to read more in case there was like spoilers or anything. And mm-hmm. the author like writes something in the acknowledgements about never intending to like write this book. So she was just going to leave everyone high and dry. Yeah, exactly. 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 Crazy. Damn. <sighs> Scary. Well, yeah. And so, wow. That kind of live in fear a lot. And that's mm-hmm. something we want to, you know, talk about. But mm-hmm. we also live in the light ultimately. Mm-hmm. And it's time to talk about the light. There's no better time than the Manic Pixie moment of the week, which is a time where we just felt bathed in sunlight. We felt mm-hmm. nothing could be wrong with the world. And we was just, exactly. you know, existing in it. Mm-hmm. And so, Becca, what was that moment for you this week? Good question. So it's something we teased a little bit about our pre-show talk. Mm -hmm. um, And something I'm always bringing up and talking about is how I am an AMC A-list member. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I see lots of movies all the time. So I did see Don't Don't Worry, Darling. Don't Don't Worry, Darling. (laughs) I started so hard there. but um, And it was literally fantastic. (gasps) And it really made me... First of all, to take a step back and think, oh my dear God, I have to get off of Twitter at some point in the day. Because <laughs> Twitter and <laughs> oh, Twitter will have you thinking it's the worst film ever made. Olivia Wilde should be executed publicly, probably. Literally, like <laughs> like craziness. Um, this movie was great. 
Like, so fan- I really understood when Harry Styles said, I love this movie because it's a movie. It feels like a movie. <laughs> it feels like a movie that you would go and like see. And it really was as someone who did that. Mm-hmm. Totally. He hit the nail on the head. Um, which is so exciting. Also, they did him so motherfucking dirty when they posted that clip of him because the character is supposed to be British. And that was like not clear. That that's the, that was that whole thing about the clip. That was the whole thing yeah. I didn't understand about the clip is like, I'm like, is he supposed to be? Yes. So he's supposed to be. Yes. No spoilers. Okay. Basically. That is that guy's British. Okay. See, that's what I was confused about because it, it did feel like, I mean, granted, I've never really like, I guess Harry Styles, Harry Styles isn't like, you know, he's not like talking like this exactly, but like, right. he's not, he's also not like, you know, super, you know, Americanized but, or um, anything, but yeah. yeah. And so I think that was what was unclear. Like, because yeah. that, that was, I, I'm so glad you pointed that out because I feel like I didn't know, like that was something I was always like, so is he no, British? Fully. Is he like I didn't know about that, but that's yeah. that's good to know. No, exactly, and like, yeah, it's just they should have like tweeted and been like, so guys, actually, like the character is British, guys. Like you, you must understand this, mm-hmm. so as to not destroy the movie's reputation and Harry's. Honestly, mm-hmm. um, yeah, he was fine in it. Obviously, he's not at Florence Pugh's level. We knew he wasn't going to be, but I don't mm-hmm. even think Shia LaBeouf is at Florence P- Pugh's level. Like, oh, no, no, like, no man on. could be at a woman's level about anything. Well, you're so right. In the- <laughs> yeah. Also, Nick Kroll and Harry kiss in the movie. That's literally why they kissed at the premiere. Uh, the fact yeah. that Nick Kroll is in that movie. So funny. <laughs> Talk about one of the most unserious things ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's Talk good about the fact that we're just doing anything. No, I love Nick Kroll. There is a moment where Olivia Wilde does throw Nick Kroll to the ground, and that was definitely my favorite part of the movie. Like she fucking yeeted him to the floor. She it was said, beautiful. Get the fuck down. <laughs> Boom. Like the hardest body slam ever. But anyway. I loved it. Yeah, fantastic movie. And honestly, I do love a 90 minute movie, but this one being like two hours, it flew by because it was so entertaining. Oh, really? Yep. I think two hours is fine. Getting beyond two hours is where you start to get a little crazy to me. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I can I can even accept a two hour 15. Two hour 30 is where I start to get a little bit like, okay, what are we even doing? Yeah, it really depends for me. I mean, uh, I just wish every movie was like 130 to 145. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. so good. The world, society, if. <laughs> Literally. I met, I actually met um, these, this couple from, they live in the UK. One is Scottish and one is British. Mm-hmm. First of all, fabu. Second of all, lesbians. Mm-hmm. Third of all. Yeah. Um, one of them works in the art department, like the art department for like a production company. Oh, and wonderful. so she's worked. Yeah. And so she's worked on like a bunch of different stuff for that. And then her girlfriend worked in set construction. Amazing. And they share our opinion because I, at, at some point I was like, at some point I was like, oh, the perfect length is like 90 minutes, no intermission for, I, I believe about a piece mm-hmm. of theater. Perfect length is 90 minutes, no intermission. Yes. Beautiful. I, as somebody who does theater, intermissions are stupid. For, for actors, they're great, but for audience members, mm-hmm. as an audience member, I hate them. Yeah. Like, don't make me be. It feels <sighs> like taking a meal break at work. Like, why would you make me clock out if I'm here? Yeah. Just oh, let also, me work. A, pet peeve, a pet peeve of mine is when there couldn't, there, could not have been an intermission there could could not have been an inter- intermission if that makes sense but they put intermission in oh the opportunity to not have one was there but they still yes. put one in like the the length Terrible is enough evil. where the length is enough where 
you could have not had an inter- or you could have not had an intermission, but you put one in anyway. Cause then you're just mm-hmm. extending the whole night by 15 minutes for no reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's one thing if it's like if the show's an hour and a half before intermission, yeah, I'm gonna need a sack. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Getting a little off the manic you of it all. But anyway. It's all right. But yeah. Well, that leads us into Don't worry, sorry. Twin. <laughs> don't worry darling but um yeah anyway it was fabulous mm-hmm. quinn what was your manic pixie moment of the week my manic pixie moment i just had it what was it i thought oh yes 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 all yes. right yeah yes yes actually um okay i so back in high school that's something I haven't talked about publicly a lot. Um, I actually started a Instagram account. Oh, okay. That was supposed to be more oriented towards my identity, my identity as an artist. Mm-hmm. Something somewhere where I could like talk about art, like that kind of thing, because I was just feeling very inspired at that time, and I was like, I think I want, but it, but it's like Instagram is like kind of this hard thing where you have to have like a brand for an account like you can't just be throwing up like whatever you want on instagram Mm -hmm. it feels like at least it's dumb but like it feels like that but i think i think there is something to be said for like okay like my personal instagram quinn p murphy the artist known as it's just about Mm -hmm. me my life you know things like that but Mm -hmm. if i want to do anything like different that you know maybe like somebody i knew in eighth grade doesn't want to hear like all my contemplations on like you know warhol or whatever so I made an mm-hmm. Instagram. It was called Quinn P. Murphy Art. Amazing. It actually existed before Quinn P. Murphy, the Instagram. So Crazy. Quinn P. Murphy Art. And then I like did it for like a month or two. And then I was like, uh. and it kind of became like a joke with my friends. Okay. <laughs> it became like a little bit of a joke because I was like, I don't know. Like not, not in like a malicious way, but just in like, a, oh, this is an interesting thing because I'm mm-hmm. a forward thinker. And now mm-hmm. everybody wants to do spam accounts, all that, all that, all that. Right. But anyway. And so I've just been so inspired in Istanbul and um, Berlin, especially by like the street art and stuff. And like, mm-hmm. and also, you know, the artist way of it all. And so I can't believe I'm admitting to this, but this week I reactivated Quimpy Murphy art. Wow, I'm gonna have to throw you a follow, I fear. No, yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so it's under construction. I don't, I haven't had okay. like the space to really be like, well, what do I want this to be? But I logged okay. back into it and she's yeah. alive. She's alive. Wow. She's alive. I don't Just... know what she's gonna be. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm excited and it feels very much like she will grow. Yeah. Who Lovely. knows? Wow. Oh my God. So yeah. I, I think she will gain the clicks, views, and engagement that she wants. <laughs> the clicks and the views. It has a good I have like over a hundred followers on there. Oh. 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 Perfect start. More than our podcast Instagram. Oh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Guys, that's a nice little reminder to follow the podcast Instagram. Oh my gosh. And Becca, where can people even do that? Or wait. Oh, yeah. right. I guess we can start with the yeah, show. Yeah. Where can people follow the show <laughs> yeah, if they would like yeah. to? Um, Manic Pixie Jump Scare on Instagram, TikTok, and also YouTube, where we do post the podcast at large. Also, usually some exclusive content over there. We are really hoping, wishing, begging, pleading, fucking crying on our hands and knees that you guys would comment in the fucking comment section on YouTube. It is free. Literally. I think a lot of you don't know that. Must be. <laughs> anyway. There's a disconnect somewhere. <laughs> yeah, because we get so many views on there, guys, but no one will just say People like people are looking. first. Yeah. <laughs> guys, even if, guys, even if Becca and I got like a first, we'd be like, oh my God. Nice. And there is one of you that's first. It has to be. Yeah. So think about that. Yeah, guys, especially because I'd be uploading these videos on like hostile Wi-Fi, like 
<laughs> slowing down everybody else's <laughs> Wi-Fi connection. So y'all can have a fucking little show every Friday. <laughs> and you're not great. It's something for sweet that. for the fucking kids. And, yeah. And you're not <laughs> and you're not showing your gratitude for that. And that is for starting to peace piss me, me off. off. I'm gonna piss <laughs> off. It's something sweet for the fucking kids. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck this is. I'm fun for the summer anyway. time. <laughs> um something for the girls get ready and party too. Anyway. So yeah. Um Quinn. Let me ask you first, where can the people keep up with you individually? We are testing our neuro pathways because I we, know. if there's something that's like <laughs> super regimented about the show, it's how we do the outro. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, you can follow me at Quimby Murphy okay. on Instagram and TikTok. You can follow me at Quimby Murphy underscore on Twitter. You can also, I guess, I don't know. I'm not going to make any promises about when something is going to appear there. But if you want to be in on the fun, there's also Quimpy Murphy Art making a comeback. Hell and so, yeah. Hell you know, yeah. Guys, if you are as excited as my friend Jack is about Quimpy Murphy Art coming back, maybe go over and give her a little follow. Um, of course. And you can find me reading a book on the train. Uh, being forlorn. <laughs> Being Slay. fucking forlorn. Forlorn. Be fucking forlorn. <laughs> and you are. BFF. I hope to see you on the Hot Guys Reading Instagram as well. Oh my God. It was my dream. Yeah. <laughs> Hot Days Reading. <laughs> I should start that. That's hilarious. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> Hot people of unspecified gender reading. <laughs> Becca. Ma'am, is that your baby? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> is that your baby? Oh, she's gonna be on but Lizzie McGuire needs to be on this podcast. I don't know who <laughs> guys, if if any of you know Lizzie McGuire, you need to make sure she knows about us. Get in contact with her. You literally immediately. Yeah. She is like the one person we have on the stand list who I'm like confident we could actually get on the show. <laughs> yeah. If we tried hard this is, anyway. This is like code red. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Becca, where can people follow you if they're mm, so inclined? They yeah, yeah. They can follow me on Instagram at Becca Hobart, Twitter, Bex Gloss, Spotify, Bex Gloss, and TikTok, where are y'all going during World War Three? They can also find me fighting Chef Leon from Below Deck Season 3, because oh. personally, I found him to have a skewed moral compass, and I've just been <laughs> thinking about that lately. He started the fire. <laughs> not the skewed Any. moral compass that's such, yeah, a, it's that's such a funny thing to say they have a skewed moral compass <laughs> it says all you need it says all you need to say about a person exactly i leave it at that chef leon evil evil little girl <laughs> evil evil little girl oh, oh god, god. Well, well just like that we're, we're quinn, quinn. <laughs> In the weird Becca. Weir Becca. And thank you for what? <laughs> that like I think because you went a little high pitch, it did not come through on your mic, but like I kind of heard what was going on. Um Crazy. for listening. Listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Manic Pixie Jump Scare is hosted by Quinn Murphy and Becca Hobart. Executive produced by Quinn Murphy and Becca Hobart. Sound and video editing by Quinn Murphy. Social media management and highlights by Becca Hobart. And our theme song was written by Quinn Murphy, Becca Hobart, and Nandita Mahesh.